day before Memorial Day, where a lot of Americans are out grilling hamburgers and hot dogs and spending time with their families. But on this Sunday broadcast, uh, on the eve of Memorial Day, I want to spend some time discussing the history of Memorial Day versus Veterans Day and some of the popular misconceptions uh, out there concerning the United States and our 240 year history from my perspective and my point of view. Because what I want to break down here isn't about defending Infowars.com or Alex Jones and my ideas. It is about clarifying where I stand on very complex, uh, delicate issues. But I see some comments on Infowars, and I think these are important comments, uh, where people are saying, you know, you, you claim America is this big evil empire, and you claim that our military has done all these horrible things, uh, but then you say we should honor our veterans, especially on days like Memorial Day, uh, that marks the dead in this nation's history. Uh, the number in the millions uh, in, in different wars and conflicts. Now, for me, it's very, very simple, but I can see how folks get confused by this. I love the American idea of our republic. I am in love with uh, the founding of this nation and the incredible epic things that took place. And I believe in the free market Americana idea. I am a admirer uh, of American culture and of our past and, and much of the things that are happening in our present. We have been an exceptional nation, hands down. And so today I want to spend a little bit of time discussing some of the exceptional things we've done. And I'm not going off notes here, I'm just going off my heart and off my mind and off my memory. Uh, and then perhaps once we uh, post this uh, audio slash television show to InfoWars after we're live today, uh, other folks uh, can then you know, add their comments about what they think makes America so great and how do we rediscover that greatness and bring it back. So I'm going to talk about the American spirit today, and I think that's embodied to a great extent uh, by our veterans, uh, especially those that are fallen uh, and, and their ultimate sacrifice. Uh, you can also say that America is, is illustrated by its inventiveness uh, and by its exploration. And yes, the American spirit is uh, also um, known to not be one that bends to the will of the corrupt or the powerful. And it's that essential spirit captured in the Declaration of Independence, 1776, July 4th, that is so antithetical to the globalist, technocratic, new world order, top-down system of tyranny. So America never truly lived up to its great dreams and its great visions. But just the uh, attempts to do it made this republic the apple of the world's eye and a model that others have tried to follow for over 200 years. The planet instantly was in love with America. The planet instantly wanted to come to the new world, especially after the republic was established. And we have been exceptional. The globalists have been attacking everything that has made us rugged individuals, everything that has made us exceptional. And quite frankly, I want to see 1776 worldwide. And that doesn't mean American power or hegemony worldwide, but American soft power. And what truly made this republic great, the true uh, core values that, that, that are universal and are in humanity, and that only one example of which was this republic. So that's what it comes down to, not, not exporting our ideas, but actually exercising those true systems in a 21st century renaissance, a new enlightenment to where you don't have to conquer people. They want to adopt and, and, and also adapt those ideas and those systems that made us great because they work so well. That's why under Agenda 21 and Cloward and Piven and the Globalist Project, they must defeat America. They must use us to build their world government. They must use the republic to carry out their dirty work and have our name on their system. So that first global government will fall and then the new world government will come in on its ashes and on the ashes of this republic. And I'm here to try to resist that. I'm Alex Jones. Stay with us. We'll be right back after this short break. Thank you for joining us on this May 29th, 2016 Sunday edition. It is the eve of Memorial Day, and I wish to defend Memorial Day, Veterans Day, and the American flag today, because these symbols of Americana have been seized, have been captured by the globalist, 
and have been used to sell tyranny and oppression worldwide, while at the same time preparing our republic for its eventual total and complete collapse. This is the essence of the globalist project, and I want to expose it right now. Now, coming up, at the bottom of the hour, we're going to air an interview that I conducted Friday night with Tim Kennedy. Tim Kennedy is better known as being one of the top UFC middleweight fighters in the world. He's also known for being drug clean when most of the other fighters keep getting caught on steroids. But I don't really admire him because of the UFC. I admire him because I happen to know a lot of people that are retired and current special forces in the SEALs, but particularly uh, in the Army, also some Marines. And they, across the board, uh, say that Tim Kennedy is one of the most honorable constitutionalist people that they've ever met and that um, he's also, hands down, one of the most dangerous, uh, committed, versatile soldiers they've ever seen. Uh, he's basically the Army's Chris Kyle, but the Army doesn't allow legends to grow. They're the quiet professionals. And he actually worked with Chris Kyle, um, interfacing with him on a lot of the Army uh, slash Navy missions. And I happen through other folks to know um, some of the work that uh, he does. Let's just say it's the highest level of the Army in the most elite Joint Forces units. And that's why when he's privately not told me anything classified, but, but privately, you know, uh, giving me intel uh, that's important, that Dove tells my own research, I pay attention to it. But on the Friday radio show, you know, he, he said, look, there are ISIS cells here in America confirmed. And they are looking at basically the DNC and RNC. And, and ISIS has said they're doing that, you know, in the news. So that's how he's able to talk about it. But he basically pointed out that, yes, the, you know, the globalist contingent in our government is allowing these people in so that when they attack, they can do just what they've done in Europe. They can take our liberties away. Doesn't make sense, but logic, you know, is, 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 is being exterminated right now uh, in this country uh, and worldwide. So coming up at the bottom of the hour, it's just, it's just a nine minute interview. It's very condensed, very focused. We're going to premiere that here uh, on the radio uh, coming up. Also, there's an extremely viral video that I shot a few days ago dealing with the fact that Donald Trump has the globalist absolutely just scared to death and why. And it's because he's mainlining the understanding that there is a shadow government. There is a global government being formed and it's anti-prosperity, anti-human. This is only a seven minute interview. So we're gonna come back in the next segment and I'm gonna play it. But here it is short and sweet. America never realized all of its dreams but the dreams of our republic are the greatest expression of the renaissance the new enlightenment and that came out of christians to boil it down that wanted to have an open free society where you could still have any religion you wanted and not have a state-run religion and who wanted to build a new civilization truly based on brotherly love and free association and that's what caused the Renaissance. The United States was a project uh, of the Renaissance uh, and a project of the real Illuminati, not the false 1776 uh, Jesuit clone they created at Ingolstadt University. And I'm not even saying it was a Jesuit conspiracy, but it was a Jesuit priest who then launched the French Revolution later. That's why they launched it the same year, right after ours had already kicked off in 1775. You know, our, our, our Declaration of Independence started, started almost a year later on July 4th. And it is that Declaration of Independence that is the heart of Americana and that incredibly beautiful idea that, that just 10% of the implementation of it made us the freest, most prosperous nation on earth. And on Memorial Day, we remember the Americans by the, by the millions who fought and who died and who believed in something. So yes, America's flag gets flown over corrupt things that happen. We've been captured. I want to take our flag and our republic back. Yes, our nation does a lot of bad things and exports a lot of uh, cultural rot because we've been captured and taken over. The parasite that's in America and in Europe of evil and corruption isn't America, isn't Europe. But it wants to use us to build its world government again and then collapse us. And I know you know that, but we cannot allow 
this scapegoating to happen. The America I love created more than 90% of the world's modern inventions. The America I love was known for trailblazing and not bowing to tyranny and going and freeing the oppressed and trailblazing the end of slavery along with England. Yes, it was England and the United States that trailblazed ending slavery to a certain extent. It's back in Africa now and some areas of Asia and the Middle East. So that's the America I admire and love. It's the America that empowered women and the America that first got women the right to vote anywhere in the world. Same thing happened in England and Europe. It's, it's the countries that came up with the scientific exploration and just almost every cutting edge system you can imagine, America is the leader. And when we went to war, we were the most feared because we defeated empires that no one else had ever stopped, like the British. So that's why I love this republic. I could talk for hours. I could talk for days. I could talk for weeks. I know you can think about all the great things this exceptional nation did. But when Putin says you're no longer exceptional, it's true. We are exceptional at corruption, exceptional at evil, exceptional at letting the IRS persecute patriots and veterans and Christian groups. We become exceptionally fat culturally and physically. We become exceptionally lazy on average. But just because America has been hijacked and taken over doesn't mean then we hate the republic and just get rid of it and accept whatever the latest globalist fad is because it's globalism that brought us to this low position. And I know you, the key InfoWars audience, literally the key people awake worldwide understand that. But we have to get that message out to others. Here's what it comes down to. I see comments on InfoWars.com where Joe Biggs was at the Vietnam Memorial last night after it got defaced. He went to report on it. Uh, he's there with uh, our, our camera folks. He's going to be part of the big uh, rally coming up tomorrow, so be sure and support him. Details are at InfoWars.com and on my Twitter and on his Twitter. But they're like, what are you doing out there supporting the Vietnam War? What are you doing supporting all the bloodthirsty baby-killing veterans? You know, what are you doing out there, you know, you scum? And this guy gets in Big's face, and he gets back in that guy's face. Our country's been better than the others promoting freedom and liberty. Our ideas are the best. Our playbook's the best, even if we never implemented it that much. Do you understand? So I support the people that fought and died because they believed they were fighting for this country. At least they went out and did something. At least they stood up for something. And many of them were conscripted under the draft. And it goes on from there. I support people that care enough to come out and, 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 and be there and remember the people that died. Because I admire people that are willing to stand up and fight and believe in something. And that's why it's hard for me to sit here and even talk about this without getting tears in my eyes. Because I think about all my family that have been in the military and what good, straight, strong, hardworking people they are. And then I could call them at 3 a.m. if I needed them to come to my house and help me if I had a you know, leak in the roof or, or I was sick. And I think about the rest of the public and all the scum and the chicken necks that come out and spit on the veterans and spit on our reporters and attack us and laugh when a police horse falls down because they run into it and it breaks its leg and they celebrate. Let me tell you, if i got to choose sides, I'm going to choose the military and I'm going to choose the police and I'm going to choose what's left of America because I'm here to tell you the globalists are trying to throw this country over. That's why they show the bad cops. That's why they show the bad troops. That's why they promote it and push it, not to reform it, but to absolutely make us hate the military and hate the police and hate our local governments because they know that's all that's left of America. And let me tell you, it isn't perfect and it's fallen apart, but it's still got basic ideas enshrined in it that scare these globalists to their very core level. And they want to strangle and extinguish the fire of liberty in this republic. They want to shut down the press. They want to shut down our inventiveness. They want to shut down our industry. They want to shut down our families and attack our fathers and our mothers and our daughters and our sons and abort our children. These globalists hate our guts and they've stolen the republic and they've used this great engine to take over the world while debilitating us and getting ready to destroy us. We're going to come back from break. I'm going to speak a few more minutes about why I support Memorial Day and why I choose America and this republic. And then we're going to go to this other special report. And Anthony Gucciardi is coming in. Stay with us. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Anthony Gucciardi again is coming up towards the end of the hour. And we'll be hosting the broadcast, taking your phone calls on what Memorial Day and Veterans Day means to you. Do you disagree with, with what I've said? Uh, if so, I mean, what do we replace it with? Uh, simple questions like that. But I also want to hear from people just about American exceptionalism. We were exceptional by every benchmark, by every foreign historian's eye. We really have been a special country. What made us special? And I want to rediscover that, and I want to promote that, and that's what I believe in. And that's what I stand for. And 
I'm not going to sit here and just give up on this republic as the globalists try to destroy our morale and, and destroy our will and, 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 and get all of us to stand down. Because I'm here to tell you, we're in a battle for this republic and a battle for this world. The globalists are evil, anti-human eugenicists, cold-blooded, self-serving, the most wicked people you could imagine, totally turned over to the dark side. And we can stand up and defeat it if we realize how big the stakes are. It's, it's that simple. And Donald Trump, regardless of who he is, has caught that zeitgeist of nationalism. And that's why the controllers are so scared of him. And that's why there's a huge awakening happening around the world that he and all of us are only one small manifestation of. This is only the beginning. So I'm going to re-air this special report we did on how Donald Trump has helped take us over the zeitgeist, the tipping point against globalism, where now people see the worldwide shadow government for what it is and are now learning the details. That is the first major step in defeating the globalists. We're there. The education level is here. This is a very, very special moment. Stay with us. The establishment is in panic mode like it's never been before. In the last 24 hours, the New York Times, CNN, MSNBC, and many other establishment media outlets all came out and said, we're in panic mode. Donald Trump is channeling Alex Jones. Donald Trump's getting his worldview from InfoWars.com. And any sort of conspiracy theory, anything from the 80s, the 90s, or even beyond, I think is just continuously stoking that fear. But this also just feels very narrow cast to me. I mean, this oh, really yeah, is sure. like, I, I really think, and I, it's been amazing to watch this. I mean, you got Alex Jones, who I've been watching a lot recently. He's like the sort of, the sort of um, main conspiracy theorist, the sort of probably the most popular in, in American life right now. You know, Roger Stone goes on that show every day. Right. There's this crazy vortex of all that stuff back from the 90s and Dan Burton firing a gun you know, into a pumpkin or whatever the hell it was. All of that stuff which has been simmering there forever and Drudge is stoked is now sort of exploding through the channel of Trump. And part of the challenge, Michael, it strikes... He's talking about the JFK assassination. He's talking about Clinton's killing people and rape. Oh my gosh, it's so terrible. It's so horrible. What do we do? Well, the majority of Americans know the government killed Kennedy. It's over 90% in polls. The Clinton scandals with the mysterious deaths and everything are incredibly famous, the term Arkansas. He's talking about things that the majority of Americans know are going on. And what's happening is the facade of the mainstream media is falling, and they're figuring out the facade is falling, because when they criticize Trump for talking about these things, he gets more popular. The tide has now officially turned. They keep trying to turn the tide back, and it's not working. Am I proud of the fact that they're saying, you know, Trump gets his worldview from Alex Jones. Yes, but that's not even true. My worldview of how the globalists operate in history is mainly off declassified documents, congressional hearings. It was declassified in the 1960s and in the 70s in the church hearings that the CIA put out the term conspiracy theorist to criticize even mainline investigative journalists that were exposing opium coming out of Vietnam and things like that. This has all happened. They've been caught over and over again. That's their term. And now Trump comes in amplifies what I'm saying, what Drudge Report and, 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 and Matt Drudge is saying, and just common sense stuff, and it's blown past them, and their facade has collapsed. It was always a facade, but now it's blown over. And Trump is hitting a whole new demographic worldwide, even if he was a sellout, even if he's a bad guy, which I don't think he is. I think the guy's a hero. He's doing irrevocable damage to him. <laughs> this is an incredible time to be alive, and the info war has never been exploding faster. We're, we're getting like triple the traffic we got six months ago. Uh, it's just amazing how mainline our information is going. Mainline libertarians, mainline conservatives, mainline anti-war patriots, Amish-type folks, uh, folks that are into being natural and organic, they're all awake. But they were already awake. I didn't wake them up. I was just a prominent person putting the information out and organizing it and, and, and having great reporters like our crew and you, the listeners, getting the info out. We're all a family from every race, color, and creed part of this fight. And history is happening. This is the potential beginning of 1776 Part 2. They're going to crash economies. They're going to start big wars. They're going to pull out the stops, folks. But we know that they try to use these crises, both manufactured and real, to get more power. And that's why they're being defeated. And the guys, oh, no, not another one. Where is he? How old is this kid? How old is this kid? Get out of here. Get out of here.
get out of here. Still wearing diapers. Look at this kid. I'm telling you, the kid looks like he's 10 years old. I've never seen them. It's unbelievable. That's the youngest protester I've ever seen. Actually, Ted Cruz had a very young one also. I've never seen anybody like that. All right. Trump is just mainlining what the majority of Americans are already concerned about. And we're tired of being lied to. And the system is in full panic mode, turning all these thugs loose to try to go shut down free speech rallies and more. And that's only backfiring. The system is so scared right now. But bottom line, America's culture is a conspiracy culture since 1776. When we were ruled by a faraway land, by a faraway empire. We were born out of not trusting the government and wanting a small government. We're just rediscovering who we were and what made us great. We've been occupied by multinational globalists that say they're establishing a world government. And everything from the New York Times to the Financial Times of London. Then we say we don't want to be part of an unelected world government. And you call us dangerous terrorists. In the Washington Post three days ago. Is this global governance at last? Is it one world? The central bankers in charge. But aren't we all just living and dying for what the central banks do? Of course we are. We are absolutely slaves to central banks. You people want to have a full takeover of America when you've already seized its institutions. You want to shut down free speech. We're not flat-footed. We warned everybody. Patriots 60 years ago got the word out. And now we held your system back for so long, it finally is getting here. You're behind schedule, but people are now awake and were warned that you were coming and what your system would be. People like Ron Paul 30, 40 years ago, people like, oh, it's just amazing. People like uh, Barry Goldwater 50 years ago, they were so on target. And we stand on their shoulders today. This is just an incredible time. So spread the word. People are ready to wake up to the fact that we have an occupied government of takeover artists. And we're going to restore our republic if we understand these people are illegitimate, break the trance, and take our republic back. Their takeover was so big and so over the top, that was its advantage because it was just so incredible. But once the hoax that it doesn't exist is gone, it's game over. Infowars.com is just one key outpost in this fight. Please intensify our efforts against the globalists, restore our republic, and free the world from the hands of the new world order. And we are back again on Alex Jones, your host. Infowars.com is the tip of the spear in the fight for human liberty. The globalists are doing everything they can to block this site. We need Infowars to realize the battle is now worldwide and get our videos and articles and other key intel out to everyone as much as you can, as fast as you can, continually, because we're starting to turn the tide. Now, here is the key interview we're premiering now with Tim Kennedy, top level special forces operative on the coming attempt to destabilize and overthrow the country. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen. And welcome back here on InfoWars and Nightly News and this Friday evening edition. Now, we've already seen civil unrest at record levels since the 60s here in the United States, mainly Bernie and Hillary supporters attacking our own Jakari Jackson, hitting him with a rock, uh, attacking police horses with barricades they're throwing at people. Uh, sh the New York Times calling, uh, you know, for somebody to kill Trump. Uh, Glenn Beck saying he wants to stab him. Uh, the establishment media the leftists are really trying to destabilize this country from my historical research. But Tim Kennedy, uh, Green Beret, uh, tours all over the world, famous UFC fighter, obviously, has also worked in some of the most elite units that deal with continuity of government and things like that. Now, he, he didn't tell me that. I know folks that are involved in that, and they say he's one of the top guys. But he says, yes, I'm an expert, and that he can speak to it. And so I want him to kind of repeat to us what he said behind the scenes about how concerned he is about what is coming, what is already here, and how bad it could get, and how we stop it and maintain our free, open republic. Because make no mistake, the Soros-backed globalists want civil disobedience, civil emergencies, riots, looting, race war, to bring in even greater control later. They're pushing this to take everybody's free speech in the end. So for the about eight minutes we have left here in this final segment of InfoWars Nightly News tonight, I'm going to give the floor to Tim Kennedy. It's a scary thing coming up. You know, what, what we know is coming is uh, the, per the perfect Petri dish for bad things to happen. You don't see riots in Chicago in the middle of winter. It's too cold. People don't want to go outside, right? Uh, so for, for really civil unrest to happen, you have, have, you have to have a bunch of little things 
that set up for the perfect situation. You have to have a reason, right? People are so emotionally involved in this presidential election right now. And finally, for the first time, realizing that there's something wrong with our country, that there's been like the existential perspective that the eyes are open, eyes wide open. We know that something's not right. The racial segregation that, you know, even though we have a president saying, I'm trying to break down borders, we've never had so much hate between different racial segments, which is, is disheartening and, and concerning. But what's even more scary is we know that all of these things individually are setting up for the perfect opportunity for serious civil unrest. And now that we're moving into summer, we're moving into the presidential election, we're moving into us sending troops back into Iraq. We're looking at groups and segments of people that are supporting specific presidential nominees that are losing their guy, that are furious over the fact that you know Ted Cruz you know, the never Trump people or the never Hillary people or the never Sanders people, all those people are losing their guys and they're only going to have two options. And now we have a perfect conducive environment for some serious problems. You think riots in, you know, Missouri was bad? Just wait until July. Just wait until August. So if the dominoes are set up and lined up and Soros and others want to kick them over, what do we do? Now you say dominoes. I say the gasoline. You know, like it, the trench has been dug. And that it is just full of accelerants. You know, like you have every single thing for that fire to just explode. And now so the climate is perfect. Yes, the climate is perfect. The temperature is perfect. The, everything is right for things to go really. So if the planets are aligning and most analysts are saying that it's happening all over the world. We've seen some of the globalists fund the Arab Spring to put radical Muslims in and other things. How do we counter this? I mean, educating the public. Being prepared, first of all, you know, as an individual, you have to get ready. You have to do all the little things that, you know, don't think that people don't care if people think that you're crazy. Don't think that they that you're being a fanatic, that you're being a prepper. I am only responsible for my family. My family's going to have food. My family's going to have water. We are going to be safe. And that and if you think I'm crazy because I want to make sure my family's protected, fine, that's that's the way it is. But as an individual, you need to look and research about ways that you need to prepare for what would happen in whatever city you, city you live in. If you're in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and Trump comes to town, and the whole entire city loses its mind, they're breaking horses' legs, they're throwing Molotov co cocktails, that's in May before we even have him as a nominee. What do you think is going to happen in August when we're just a couple of months away from the election when things are really ripe? It can get bad, and it can get bad fast. You need to do the research and figure out what you have to do to really prepare to make sure that your family's safe. So August, September, key times. Yeah, July, August, September, all the way up into, you know, finally November. It's when it starts cooling off, people get a little bit, while their emotions get higher, because we're getting closer to an election, um, you know, like the temperature and the environment will maybe preclude people from getting out in the streets. Also, I see political solutions to this, letting Hillary Clinton, George Soros, Obama, and others who can't win political debates but, but want to try to throw the country into crisis. It's important to know that they've done this all over the world and to let them know and the public know that they're going to be held accountable. I mean, I think at a certain point when George Soros has spent, in, in just Ferguson alone, $35 million or $33 million trying to cause race war and attack on the police, I mean, it, it, it's clear that's sedition. And, and how long is this guy allowed to do this? I mean, I defend the first amendment i'm a constitutionalist so are you tim but at a certain point when you've got some outsider trying to destabilize the country uh that's 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 criminal sabotage in my view there's got to be some limit to this i mean if i went to europe and if i had billions of dollars or some other country or region and tried to finance destabilization people come after me yeah that hang you if you walk into a movie theater and you scream fire you go to jail you know you you have committed a crime. Absolutely. And that is what they're doing on a uh, uh, micro scale into individual cities, into even states. And now nationally, they are inciting and encouraging racial wars and riots. It's, it's uh, you know, it's, it's like our worst nightmare has come to fruition. We are actually realizing that you put these people in front of a camera and give them a microphone and they're enabling other people to hurt police officers, to go and stab and riot and everything that we're against as a nation, these people are encouraging. And, and it's the very same Peter Sutherland, George Soros, and others that are in Europe that have let five million, quote, refugees in that you've talked about. Um, 
how, how big are these cells? How, how big is the danger of what's happened in Europe? Because, you know, here they use a bunch of leftist mobs and others brainwashed by the public school system. Over in Europe, they're bringing in 5 million jihadis, 80% are military-aged men, I'm told. From, from, from your connections and research, is that accurate? Yeah. So if, if you bring in, let's say, 100 people, we know somewhere between 10 to 15 of them have been radicalized, that they're extremists. So when you're talking that you're bringing in a million people, how many of those now do we know are extremists? 150,000. 50,000. Now look at what one does in San Bernardino. One guy and his stupid wife go and start mowing down people. That's one dude. They're liberal co-workers. Think about what 100,000 of them could do in this country. Or what they're going to do in Europe in the next five years. It's coming. So why would Merkel and Halan and others bring them in? Use the civil emergency to ban nationalist and patriot speech. That's what they've done. If you, if you want to be able to shut people up, you have to use fear. So the, the de definition of terrorism is to use fear or violence as a tool, as a weapon to achieve your objectives, right? Um, if you're a politician, you can use that same fear to, to take away freedoms, to pass acts that get, give you access to every single iPhone out there. Be like, no, 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 it's a terrorist. We need to be able to get inside of that guy's phone. He's really bad. Just, just give us access to all iPhones so, that, um, so we can protect you. That's terrorism in my definition. You're using fear in a, as, a, as a weapon to gain more Absolutely. freedom. Wow, Tim Kennedy, that was powerful info. The whole country, the whole world's in danger of escalated civil unrest, like Google financing the Arab Spring to just bring in that tyranny, and these vultures sit on top of it. You're getting folks ready uh, with SheepdogResponse.com uh, and more. We're trying to get people ready by informing them. Thanks for coming in with your uh, geopolitical and uh, military and just common sense analysis. Uh, it's great to have you here with InfoWars visiting. All right, folks, that's it for this edition of InfoWars Nightly News. Lord willing, I'll be back this Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m. with a Sunday transmission, and back Monday with the four-hour radio slash TV show. You can find all the listings and more at InfoWars.com forward slash show. Have a great weekend. That's right. This is the Alex Jones Show, and I'm Anthony Gucciardi. I'll be your host for the rest of the program. And I'll tell you what, today is Memorial Day weekend, right? Lots of insane things going on. It's actually funny. Uh, I wasn't going to make it in today because of something I'm going to tell you about in a moment. But once I talked to Alex on the phone, I read some of this news. I had to come in here. Vandals defacing war memorials, uh, Vietnam war memorials in California, different areas. It's, it's unfortunately more than one story. Uh, caregivers accused of murdering World War II veteran today. Um, crime scene declared after looting at Virginia Battlefield. Lots of stuff going on on Memorial Day weekend that unfortunately is on the very, very sad side. So we've got Joe Biggs coming up next hour, in fact, live from D.C., and he's going to talk about some of the looting and the defacing of the war memorials and how he was talking about it and covering it, and protesters came up protesting him covering the defacing of the war memorials. So you get to see firsthand what these people look like who I guess are in favor of defacing the war memorials. Very, very sad stuff. Also got plenty of other news. I mean, stacks and stacks of news. Just this amount here is, we're not even going to be able to cover it most likely. I've got show points. How about 100,000 in the U.S. now work for Chinese firms, new generation buying books to express their personalities. ISIS is using 50,000 civilians as human shields as Iraqi forces uh, blitz Fallujah. And they're apparently now getting into the sex trade. We've got lots of very interesting news coming up. Now, first, as I was alluding to, I almost didn't make it into this program today for a very uh, absurd and bizarre reason. This morning, and I, I think that's, that shows how good of a show it's going to be. This morning, I had the worst pain of my entire life, 10 out of 10 pain, like someone was stabbing me repeatedly with a knife. And I passed a kidney stone, uh, sizable, a very sizable kidney stone. From my understanding, it's actually very, very large. And if you're watching on Infowars.com forward slash show right now, live on television or listening on radio, basically what it looks like is a war weapon. I mean, if, if, if you could create some type of torture device, biological torture device, that's what this kidney stone looks like. Jagged, sharp. It was terrible. Hours and hours of agonizing pain. And I finally got rid of it. I know it's a little disgusting this morning. And I'm still here joining you right now, live on air. I wanted to make sure 
then I come in and do whatever it takes to talk about this stuff. So that's what happened to me this morning. Past that. And CNN says it's worse than childbirth. And hey, here's another thing. Vince Neal from Motley Crue canceled his show the day he passed the kidney stone. Well, not us. This is going to be a good show, all right? <laughs> We're coming to you live. This is the Alex Jones show where uh, I pass a kidney stone. I still do the show. So it's going to be good. we got Biggs coming up next hour. In fact, Biggs also has this special report we're going to premiere here first about the defacing of the war memorials and what's going on there. And he's going to come on uh, next hour and talk about it. So let's go ahead and play this report. Very, very disturbing stuff. Joe Biggs here with InfoWars.com. And as you can see, we're standing in front of another memorial, another Vietnam memorial. Now right across from me is the actual wall with all the names of the men and the women who died fighting in Vietnam. Now we have an article up at Infowars.com talking about the defacement, the vandalizing of a, of a Vietnam Memorial in California and how it pissed off veterans, how it pisses me off to have been someone who fought in Iraq and Afghanistan, to have a father who almost died in Vietnam many times. And what's going on while I'm giving this speech? Some guy wants to walk behind me, liberal troll, the entire time and heckle us because we're talking about this, saying that we're out of our mind. And that's what we're seeing every day. We go to these Trump rallies, we see people waving Mexican flags, communist flags, the hammer and sickle, all this. But no one once ever has an American flag. And when they do, what do they do? They're called racist, sexist, xenophobic. It's out of control. So we're going to show you these two clips, and you guys decide what it is. But I think this is ridiculous. This is a direct reflection of poor, 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 poor leadership by our government that we're making our military look like crap in front of everyone. And what we're doing right now is we're destroying what it means to be patriotic. We should be happy to be American. We should proudly wave our flag. And that's what it's all about. So check these two video clips out. I'm Joe Biggs with InfoWars.com. Because many men and women have sacrificed their lives. They've sacrificed their time, their family, their sanity for a country they truly believe in. What happened to the three things that America were originally built on? God, country, family. We have an administration that completely demonizes Christianity all over the world. Obama goes from country to country bowing down to other people. You're full of shit, and why don't you move to another country? Because we don't need people like you. Dude, I actually fought for the fucking country, so go fuck off. Yeah. I'm sorry you like Obama, dude. Around. Every time I go to a Trump rally, there's communists running around with waving their flags, people covering their face saying they want to stop hating their state, and yet they're flipping cars and assaulting people. That's what America's coming to. We're at a pivotal point in our lifetime right now where we have these extreme leftists that are attacking our way of life. If you want to come to our country, you need to assimilate. You need to understand what it means to be an American. You need to be happy. You want to be able to cut yourself and bleed red, white, and blue. Yeah, well, go on, guy. Bye. So either way, guess what? There's a lot of people out here who don't like America, and there's a lot who do. My dad fought in Vietnam, and I fought in Iraq and Afghanistan, and I'm proud to be an American. I'm proud to have fought for America. So if you don't like what I'm saying, you can go buzz off. Joe Biggs here with Infowars.com. Now, we're at our nation's capital today. It's Memorial Day weekend, so that's why we're in Washington, D.C. And the Rolling Thunder motorcycle rally is going on tomorrow. And Donald J. Trump will actually be speaking at the Lincoln Memorial, which is just not too far away from us right now. But one of the things I want to talk about, the fact that there was a Vietnam memorial that was defaced in Venice, California. You know, this hits me near and dear. I'm a son of a Marine. A Marine who fought hard in the Vietnam War. And I myself am retired from the U.S. Army. I served 10 years and I fought in Iraq and Afghanistan. And it pisses me off to see social justice warrior punks come out and deface something like this that means a lot to me. I have respect for my country. What happened to patriotism in our country? The fact that people used to be proud to wave their American flags. Instead, what happens is we go to these Donald Trump rallies and we see a whole bunch of people waving Mexican flags, communist flags, and not one of them ever have an American flag. But they keep talking about how they love America and they want to stop hating their state. And yet they go out and they flip cars. They throw rocks at people. Jakari Jackson, an African-American, was assaulted by a Hispanic guy and called a racist because he was there simply filming at the rally in Albuquerque, New Mexico. What is going on? What happened to the patriotism in our country? What happened to people riding up and down the road being proud of what's going on, being proud of America? Yeah, we do have a failed government, a government that screwed us over time and time again. I understand that. But don't you dare put that on the backs of the men and women who actually gave up their family's time, their life, their sanity, to go and fight 
for their country, the fight for these rights, the fight for freedom of speech, for the Second Amendment. To have all of this, it's important. Memorial Day is not just a day for you to get off work and go drink beer and, you know, watch baseball or something. No. It means a lot more to that. It means what I went through. It means what through my dad went through, my brother who fought in the Marines in Iraq. It means a lot to a lot of people in America. And I can't stand it when I go out to these events and I see nothing but other countries' flags being waved here in America. It's insane. We need to bring that back. Our country used to represent a lot. America used to be God, country, and family. But people are so scared to even pray in a school now. You're told that you can't do that because it could be offensive to somebody. Obnoxious. It could be offensive to another person who came into your country because they didn't assimilate the, the right way. Freedom of religion, first words of First Amendment. Okay, but also, guess what? It's in America, too, so you have to assimilate, sir. It's America. If you want to be a communist, go somewhere else. My country as much as it is yours, sir. Okay, but guess what? And he has free speech to say what he Yeah, and I can say whatever I want. Moment. So you keep your mouth shut. So God country and family like we just said people do have the freedom of religion yes but our country was founded on christianity i shouldn't be told that i can't pray to god i shouldn't be told that i can't say a prayer at my school but guess what else is happening people can't even say the pledge of allegiance people can't even be patriotic anymore what is wrong what is wrong with the insanity and our families are being attacked the fact that you can't say him or her you can't see all this stuff Look, if a man and a woman want to get married, that's fine. If two dudes want to get married, that's fine. But stop shoving it down people's throats. We have confused kids that are going through all kinds of stuff. And people are, I just don't understand it, completely out of control. This is America. We should be proud to be an American. We should be proud to stand up for what it represents to be that. And we should sit here and we should respect these types of places. Because it's not glorifying war. It's not doing anything of that. What it means is these names right here. Look at this. Come over here. This person sacrificed their sanity, their life, everything to go because they believed in America. All of these people right here believed in something more than themselves. There it is. That's a report from Joe Biggs. You can check out the rest on YouTube, the Alex Jones channel. We'll be right back. Lots more to cover. I'm Anthony Gucciardi. This is the Alex Jones Show. Stay tuned. So, you know, it's Memorial Day weekend. And I was shocked when I came in here and I said, hey, let's see the stack about Memorial Day news that it was all about defacing war memorials. This one from Fox News says, veteran memorials in three states vandalized ahead of Memorial Day. Memorials to veterans in Los Angeles neighborhood and a town in Kentucky, as well as a Civil War veteran cemetery in Virginia, were damaged as the nation prepares to mark Memorial Day, officials said. E extensively defaced by graffiti, the vandalism occurred sometime during the past week. The homespun memorial painted on a block-long wall of Pacific Avenue lists the names of American service members missing in action or otherwise unaccounted for in Southeast Asia. So these people were defacing memorials across the United States and uh, vandals deface Vietnam War Memorial in Venice. That's from CBS. And even a deranged story about a caregiver trying to murder a World War II veteran with an oxygen tank. So it's not what I expected. And I'll tell you what. In my view, what Memorial Day should represent, at least the romantic idea of Memorial Day, is not whether you agree with the wars or not. I certainly don't agree with uh, many of the wars. And I certainly don't agree with anything that really went on in Iraq. But it's not about whether you agree or not with the individuals, the politicians who pulled the strings to me. To me, Memorial Day is about the unnamed to us uh, soldiers that died in a very, very romantic way, fighting in World War II or in Vietnam or whatever for something they believed in, which was the idea of the American dream, what the American dream used to represent, or maybe still does in some ways. The idea of absolute freedom and the idea of progressing humanity forward, the idea of defending something that's actually worth defending. These people that did lose their lives, many of them, were sitting there alone, whether it's in a foxhole or whatever, but, but with other people there, sure, but they died by themselves, hoping that what they did wasn't in vain. And the concept for me of Memorial Day is to remember those people whose names we will never know and have never known, and they actually had an idea in their hearts that they were going to push forward and that they were going to at least lose their lives for something they believed in. 
So to deface, remember, it's not defacing a government institution that pushed for wars. It's not even defacing uh, the, you know, the corrupt individuals that made some of these happen, things happen. It's defacing the names of people whose lives were lost in something that they believed in. Or even if they didn't believe in it, they were forced to, in many cases, go and do it. So to do that is a very, very sad thing. And it shows just how far we have come as a nation in the opposite direction, away from that American dream that they uh, were once fighting for and once believed in. And instead, now we're sold a repackaged American dream. And that is, of course, a lie. And a, a repackaged American dream where there's no such thing as total and absolute freedom. And instead of coming to America and building something very, very great and very, very profound and making this country better than it ever was, or the world even. I mean, why can't the world participate in the American dream, right? Instead, I believe, it has now been packaged into a system that we pay for the mega bank's profit and we are taxed out the wazoo in order to help the mega corporations pay zero tax, right? So it's kind of been repackaged in a way, hasn't it? The American dream has been repackaged, except now, in some ways, it's a massive lie. That doesn't mean we can't still fight towards the true meaning of the American dream or what it once was. And it also doesn't mean that it's the fault of these soldiers that lost their lives fighting for the original American dream. And to say that we should deface war memorials is very, very disturbing and very, very sad. Now that said, we've got some more news coming up and Joe Biggs is going to join us from DC to talk about what's going on with the defacing of the war memorial, some more Memorial Day stuff. And also don't forget InfoWarsLife.com. The Memorial Day sale is ending. 30% off across the board, a number of big supplements. You don't want to miss it. We'll be right back. That's right, this is the Alex Jones Show. And I'm Anthony Gucciardi, excited and honored to be invited guest host today. We've got Joe Biggs on the line, and we're going to punch him up here in a second because what's going on is the defacing of war memorials across the United States right now, namely about three different states. We've got Vandals Deface Vietnam War Memorial in Venice uh, from CBS Los Angeles. Fox News says that veteran memorials in three states vandalized the head of Memorial Day and some other similar headlines from different news organizations. And, you know, we were talking, if you didn't catch us on the last segment, that in my view, Memorial Day, what it represents is the people whose names we will never know, that died believing in something bigger than themselves. Not to even say that you have to agree with these wars. I certainly do not agree with the wars. Uh, it, the Vietnam War, the Iraq War, huge tragedies and very, very sad state of affairs. But it's not about the right or wrongness of the war. It's, it's about the people who died protecting something they held to be the American dream and protecting something they held to be the future of humanity, especially in such examples of World War II when they would go in and they would put their lives ahead of anything, uh, their mission ahead of their lives, which is a very, very beautiful thing. And for people to deface these war memorials is disturbing. And, you know, Joe Biggs, we played a video he had earlier where he was talking about some of this stuff. And some people started kind of, kind of, I would say, uh, yelling at him. I, I didn't totally hear the audio, but they were saying he's totally incorrect. And so we've got Joe Biggs. I want to know what you think, first of all, about the war memorials that are being defaced across the United States on Memorial Day and what you think that means right now for the state of our society. What do you think, Joe? And by the way, where are you? You're in D.C., right? Yeah, I'm in D.C. Earlier today, Trump actually spoke here. There was over 500,000 bikers for the Thunder uh, Valley or the Rolling Thunder motorcycle rally that happened and took place earlier today. I mean, there's a lot of people. D.C. is already a packed place, but you add an extra 700,000 people on top of it and road closures and all that. It has been quite the day. I can, but, uh, I can to imagine. Get, yeah, but to get back to what you were saying. Um, it is disturbing to see that people would do that. You know what that is? It's a direct reflection of the leadership we have in our country. That's pure and simple what it is. The fact that we have a president that could care less about our, about his soldiers, about his veterans. He's out playing golf. He doesn't care about these guys. There's homeless vets all over the place. There's 22 suicides a day by veterans, and yet he's going and bowing down to foreign leaders, enemies, and he's also going to places like Japan and apologizing when it, Quite frankly, we didn't start the war, but we sure as hell finished it. Well, you know, I think there's a component of, you know, being a, 
being a kid now and growing up in kind of a, a weird sheltered environment where you don't have to deal with anything. And obviously there's the entitlement and stuff, but you go through the, the establishment process. You go and study hard in school so you can get in debt to go to college and then you go to college and they tell you, you know, basically that uh, Vietnam was horrible, which it was very terrible. But then they don't understand how real life works. And they don't understand that maybe the person that fought in Vietnam, whose name is up on that wall, didn't exactly agree with the politics, but they actually sacrificed them, their lives for something they believed in. Or you know what? People are in terrible situations. People are forced to do things all over the world. Uh, world War II, you didn't exactly have to say, wow, I support this war, right, or even Vietnam. They don't understand how real life works. They don't understand the uh, problems that other people experience. They don't understand the real issue. They instead are just so self-centered. What do you think about that? But warriors are a special breed. Not everybody can be a warrior. Not everyone has what it takes to go out there and decide that there's something larger than themselves out there. You know, when I was younger, I grew up, uh, my father was in Vietnam. Um, I had other family members who were in Desert Storm. I had friends and family who were just going into the first invasion in Iraq. And it means a lot to see these people say, you know what, I love you, or I love you, son, or whatever it is, you know, brother, sister, mom, dad, you know, wife. But there's something a little bit more important just in our family right here. You know, there's God, there's country and family. And a lot of these are God-fearing men who decided, hey, I'm going to go out here and sacrifice my life. I'm willing to lay my life on the line to protect my country because I see something out there worth standing up for. And it's not our fault. It's not the soldiers' fault, the Marines' fault, the sailors' fault, the airmen's fault if we have corrupt politicians in place as well. So when Memorial Day is happening tomorrow, this weekend, this, this entire time, it's a time to reflect on those who made that ultimate sacrifice. It's not to... Uh, complain about war, have a discussion about that. Yeah, you know what? There's a lot of bad war out there. War's not good. But th these are special people who decided there was something a lot more important than them, and they de decided to put their sanity on the line. They decided to put their life on the line, their family, their relationships, and all that. And that's something that needs to be celebrated, and that's something that needs to be remembered and reflected on this time. Yeah, it's really well said. It's not about the politics of the war, like you just said, like we talked about earlier. Yeah, there's corrupt politicians that are making terrible, terrible decisions, and that's what we're trying to change every single day, right? But it's not about that. It's about the personal decisions. And it reminds me of this article. ISIS used uh, to use 50,000 civilians as, quote, human shields as Iraqi forces blitz Fallujah. Now, think about the insanity. That's so progressive. Yeah, that's progressive, right? Think about the insanity, though, of the people that actually, like you, Joe, have to deal with threats like ISIS that are using 50,000 human shields. They're just the most despicably evil group in the world. And we have to, at some level, even if you are totally against everything in the, in, on the planet, uh, you have to pay some honor to those people that are willing to sacrifice their lives to deal with ISIS, because I certainly don't want to deal with ISIS personally. Uh, no, we don't want to deal with them here. ISIS is a disgusting group. It's a terrorist organization. You know, uh, but that's same as the movement we have right now, these social justice warriors. They spit on our flag. They deface our flag. They burn it. They, 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 for Christ's sake, there was a World War II vet that was beaten with an oxygen tank. Yeah, I by saw that. that. That's ridiculous. There's zero respect with these young children that are growing up. And for some reason, it's cool to look down on veterans. It's cool to, to kick them to the curb. It's cool to make fun of them when they're going through a hard time or to make fun of the fact that they're dealing with mental issues. You know, that's not cool, though, in my, you know, in my book, and, and that it's very disrespectful. And we need a leader who's actually going to stand up and at some point in time, put his foot down and say, you know what, we need to have uh, patriotism back in our ranks again. We need to see people proud to be an American because I'm quite frankly sick and tired of going to these rallies and seeing everyone waving every single flag other than the American flag. If those countries are truly good to you and if you really love all these other countries, then you should still be there and you should still enjoy what they have. But they have nothing to offer and that's why you came here for the American dream and yet you want to spit on soldiers, you want to step on our flags, you want to burn it. And yeah, People always want to say, oh, you're glorifying a flag. No, it's not. It's the, sim the, the symbolism of it, what it means, the men and women who fought and died for that flag, what it represents, what America is. When I cut myself, I don't just bleed. It comes out red, white, and blue, and that's how I will be for the day I die. And, you know, the old, old true American dream, the real American dream that many, many people died fighting for applies to everybody. Uh, America, in its essence, the American dream was, hey, come here and be a part of it, right? Come here and partake. 
You know, the sad, sad story you were talking about is caregiver accused from the Herald Tribune of trying to murder World War II veteran with his own oxygen tank. Says as a staff sergeant flying in bombing raids over Nazi-occupied Europe during World War II, Michael Nicholas Tristano flirted with death on a recurring basis. The former ball turret gunner cheated the Reaper again last week, but instead of dodging German anti-aircraft guns flank inside a B-17 Flying Fortress bomber, police say the 91-year-old veteran survived a savage attack inside his Northport home by the caregiver entrusted with his welfare. This represents a really, really sad state of society when they're defacing the memorials and attacking a 91-year-old veteran. 91-year-old period is terrible, but the but, very idea. But, but we're, it's, it's this whole liberal, these professors that are teaching these college kids to hate their country. You know, what is it? So many, how many memorials have we seen statues being asked to be brought down because it reminds them of something that used to be racist or whatever like that? Or they think that there's something racist about it because of the guy's name. That's, that's ridiculous. Those who forget their past are doomed to repeat it again. Those statues are a reminder, yeah, we used to have a bad past. Or these memorials are a reminder, yeah, we went through some rough times. We need to reflect on that. We need to remember these things and make sure we don't do those again. That's right. So tell us about what you experienced today and what you did in D.C. Well, we got in last night. I was actually at the Vietnam Memorial. We were doing a report on the fact that uh, the Vietnam Memorial in Venice was tagged, spray painted, whatever you have it, and how I thought that that was, you know, a horrible tragedy for something like that to happen. And I was standing in front of the the Vietnam Memorial wall in a uh, You know what, Joe? Hold that thought. Actually, we're just about to hit the break right now. So we'll be right back, and Joe will explain what happened with that video when he got heckled for saying, don't deface war memorials. This is the Alex Jones Show. We'll be right back. That's right. It's the Alex Jones Show. It's Memorial Day weekend. I'm Anthony Gucciardi, and I'm here with former Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs. He's live in D.C. We're talking about these disturbing reports about just defacing war memorials, women caregivers trying to, uh, one of these, uh, a caregiver tried to kill a World War II veteran who was 91 years old with an oxygen tank over a money dispute. Just some really disturbing news on Memorial Day. There is some good news, obviously, as well about some some war stories and some surviving stories and stuff like that. But we're talking about the state of affairs that we have to be in at this point, where it's cool to deface war memorials. And it's not about whether you agree with the wars or not. I don't even agree with uh, a lot of the politics behind the wars. And it's, it's uh, Joe. It's about the truth of it's not about the politicians and the war issues. It's about those who actually died fighting for something greater than themselves. And Joe, you were getting into earlier before we hit the break, what happened today when you were outside of, I guess it was a war memorial, and talking about some things and someone started heckling you. What happened? Well, before we go into that, I want to speak a little bit on what you were just saying. The fact that we have veterans, you know, and we can't support all these wars, but we can support those people. And I find it funny that we have to praise someone like you know, Caitlyn Jenner, because, you know, this guy put on a dress and marches around. It's OK to to praise this person or it's OK to praise the Kardashians. But it's not OK to praise someone who sees something important, who sees their country and who's willing to lay their life down on the line for that. So I find that ridiculous. Our prior priorities are completely out of line. Americans need to shape up. We need to find out what it is we want. We need to understand what it means to be an American. We need to have some patriotism uh, again, because right now I see it slowly going away. Today, I saw a lot of it, but when I go across the country, I see a lot of that fading away, and it breaks my heart. But about last night, I was in front of the Vietnam Memorial, and I was actually talking about three things, God, country, and family. Some of the three most important things that we have here, the fact that our country was built off freedom of religion, you know, the fact that this is a Christian country, and that is being attacked day in and day out. You can't even say prayers in school. You know, I've talked to kids who say they're not allowed to say a prayer before class or anything like that because it could be offensive to other things like that. And then you have the country, the fact that we have men and women who are willing to join the military and stand up because they see something worth fighting for, something that's bigger than their own lives, and that we have a family now or we have these veterans who are being attacked. We have 22 suicides a day. We have homeless veterans all over the country. We have a president that goes out and plays golf. He didn't even, he did, he's, this is his hometown now. Where did he do today? Nothing. But Trump came out here. And then we have the family, the family that is being attacked. The fact that we can't say him or her, or we can't 
call somebody what they are and we have to have this you know argument over what bathrooms people can use these three core things that americans stand for are being attacked right now and that's what i was talking about last night in front of the vietnam memorial and this guy came up heckling or you know heckling me and he's like oh that's bs you know blah 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 blah. and i just told the guy he could you know get the f out of here and go back to communist china if he wanted to if he had a problem with how this is and uh he goes He's like, well, I have freedom of speech. And I was like, well, I have freedom of speech too, guys. So that means I can say what I want. But the fact that you're offended by it doesn't bother me. I'm glad it offends you. You should be offended. I should bathe you in the American flag and try to baptize you in freedom. Because that's what I should have done last night, <laughs> well, quite know. frankly. And in the background, there was tons of people. There was uh, tours being brought on. They were passing by. And people started clapping and yelling and shaking my hand and all that. You know, and basically were like, you know, that guy's a douchebag. Get him the hell out of here. You know, that's ridiculous. So the guy like that, why are you even at the Vietnam Memorial if you hate America so much? If you don't like what I was saying, that we should have these things, that we should protect these things, the foundations of what America was built on. If you don't like that, then go somewhere else. Because I'm not going to let you disrespect this memorial, this place where these names are that mean more than that guy ever will. Well, you know, it's funny. The idea of courage or our concept of courage as a, as a planet, really, has changed from, yeah, people deciding to give up their lives in World War II and Vietnam. Again, not about the politics of it, but them deciding to do it for something they believed in. That's courage. Caitlyn Jenner... That's yeah. a different level of courage, right? So our concept of courage has now warped to where it's almost like the inverse of everything. And also, I feel like it's a facade at some level, too, where everyone doesn't even believe in the political correctness. Just like when they said the Washington Redskins, the, the actual Native Americans, they did a vote and like 96 percent said that the name, the Redskins, didn't offend them. So I think a lot of it is a facade and a lot of it is pushed when there's no actual uh, base for it, right? So a lot of people, I think, get it, especially people listen to this program and others, and they realize it's all just BS, and it's not even about sides, okay? It's not even about sides. Who, who cares, uh, in my view, great, let them all have gender-neutral bathrooms. Who cares? It's just this weird issue where it's like, you're bad if you don't 100% lay down and support everything. You're terrible. How dare you even praise the veterans who gave up their lives but and there's, lost but limbs? There's an, attack, there's an attack on the American man. There's a pussification of the American man. You know, I was having a conversation with a guy here in D.C. last night when uh, Weber and I were having dinner. And the guy goes, man, he goes, you guys live in Austin? He goes, wow. He goes, he said, every time I go into Austin, I see nothing but the most feminine men in the world, you know, that, that are pushovers, that are wearing these tight jeans. And, you know, they're, they, they don't do anything because it's manly. They do it because it's, it's a fad. It's a fashion statement to have a beard now for some reason. I do it because, you know what, I was in the military so long. Quite frankly, I got tired of shaving. And when I got out, I made a promise I wasn't going to shave anymore. So I'm keeping that promise, you know. But there's an attack on our families and the male. And it's ridiculous because when you have men who are pussified, when their kids step out of line, what's going to happen? Nothing. They allow them to do whatever they want. These kids are being taught in schools to have no respect for America, to have no respect for veterans, to have no respect for their elders, to have zero respect for anything at all. And to, to be entitled, to be given everything, not to work a hard day in their life, but just to sit there and bitch and moan and want, you know, have everything given to them. That's the attack, and that's what's happening with our family incrementally. It's ridiculous. And Bernie Sanders, all that he, he does, he further encourages that kind of action. The pussification of our leadership, our family, to allow these kids to run around and do whatever they want. You know, if I did something stupid as a child, my dad jerked a knot in my tail. But guess what? Did that make me a bad person? Negative. That made me a better person because I realized, I realized that, hey, that's the wrong thing to do. Or if I said something to him and said it out of line or to an older gentleman, to an elder, and I said something wrong, he'd smack me upside the back of the head and say, you know what? That's not right. That's disrespectful. That's not happening anymore because we got parents right now uh, that are just too scared to do anything because they turn on MSNBC and they're being told that they can't, you know, discipline their child or they can't do this and that. This is just an attack on Vietnam memorials. This is an attack well, on the American way of life. You know what I think it is? It's that, number one, there is a so-called moral crisis in the world right now in the United States where, you, yeah, you have kids that have been given everything that are entitled. They grow up and they don't want to do anything. They don't want to work. They just want everything given to them. At the same time, you know, definitely, even at a biological level, there are things attacking the uh, structure of men. Also, at the same time, 
I feel like it's not about like fake macho man stuff though. Like you know, we need to just, just you know, I'm so cool. Like I'm I'm awesome. It's actually you know, it's deciding to be a real man, right? Because a true alpha male isn't someone that just goes out and acts cool. And you know this, you you know what I'm talking about. Isn't someone that just goes goes out and acts cool and acts tough and acts real. It's someone that actually cares. It's kind of the exemplification of some of these veterans who did give their lives up and did die and didn't have their name glorified throughout the halls. They gave their lives up for something they believed in. That is true alpha male. Leading the pack, actually caring, and giving your life up for a mission. Anyway, Joe Biggs, thank you so much. Uh, we may speak with you again in the next segment if you have time. If not, thank you for joining us. This is the Alex Jones Show. A lot more to come. The device that eavesdrops on the voices in your head. Mind-reaching machine could soon turn your secret thoughts into speech. Scientists want, reprodu re to, want to reproduce speech from brain recordings in real time. It's from the Daily Mail. Just one of the pieces we're going to be going over in a second here. In addition to protein jab to stop heart attacks, injection brings hope for sufferers. Lots more and some crazy ISIS news, but first... <clears throat> Biggs did want to pop in and one make uh, one final point before he leaves us in D.C. about everything that's going on. Biggs, what's on your mind? Well, I just want to say something to all the women out there that are watching as well. If you have a boyfriend who doesn't know how to shoot a gun or know what a firing pin is, you actually have a girlfriend. And that's further proof as to what I was saying about the pussification of the American man. So uh, everybody needs a highly, uh, I want to highly encourage everyone to go out there and uh, use that Second Amendment and go out and shoot guns. And, uh, have the ability to learn how to protect yourself and so you can protect your family. And uh, maybe you can uh, save your family's life and those kids can grow up and be awesome and not uh, push over social justice warriors. That's well, one of the main things. <laughs> there you go. That's a message from <laughs> Joe Biggs over there. You know, by that standard, too, I must say I was uh, a city slicker. I, I might as well, I guess, have been um, a complete pansy in your book because I never <laughs> fired a gun ever until I got to, well, I did fire it once or twice, until I got to Austin, Texas, though. Then I realized, man, I probably should how to use, know how to use this thing. Not you because I'm a crazy missing. killer. Yeah, not because I'm a crazy killer person, but because, gee, everyone else has one, and it's a great way to defend your house, right? It it's builds a great, character, too. It teaches and you fun. all kinds of it's great It's fun. Things. Yeah, it's yeah. It's fun, and when you, after you use it, you have to break it apart. You know, when you I was a kid, though. You've got to take care of it. Everybody, you teach people yeah, about it. Exactly. Well, you know, it's a learning tool. In Philadelphia, where I grew up, if you had a gun, whew, you might as well have been a gangbanger. Like, you, you are just a w crazy person. Like, you are insane. It's illegal, basically. You have to get permits and stuff to have it in downtown Philadelphia. So a gun was like, ooh, a gun. But then when I broke that facade, I was like, what's the big deal about? And, you know, I go back there. I just visited last week. And you see people talk about, like, you have a gun? And they think everyone in Texas is like a crazy hog-hunting hillbilly, right? Like I'm some hog-hunting hillbilly now that I own a firearm. It's pretty funny. It's worse than D.C. All I've been I up there several this. times, too. ISIS came to quite a few states, and ISIS came to Texas and lost. ISIS went to California and actually pulled out some things that they wanted to. So that's a lesson learned right there. You know what? Stop being soft targets. Let's stop making people soft targets. We have uh, evil people out there who want to do bad things to us. They hate us for our freedom. They hate us for our way of life. And you need to be able to protect yourself. And it's also a great way to go out and have fun. Plus, it's cool. Hey, it's real life. ISIS is real. Things are... People actually want to kill you. People want to go into your house and kill your kids and do horrible, horrible things to you. It's the sad reality of life. It's the, the sad very, reality very sad of truth. life is we have a president that goes to Japan and apologizes for the bomb in Hiroshima and Nagasaki and doesn't talk about the fact that it started somewhere else by another group. Come on. Well, hey, man, you're in D.C. Go race some hell about it. Oh, I have been today. That's one of the main questions I ask people what they thought about that. The fact that we have a commander in chief that bows down to other leaders and then also apologizes for things that we didn't even start. But guess what, America, the red, white, and blue, sure as I'll finish it. Right on. Well, I'll tell you what. Also, since I have to plug this hour because it's very important, at InfoWarsLife.com, InfoWarsStore.com, I actually got a sheet right here, and I said, oh, wait a minute. That's, I didn't realize it's all still going on. 30% off Superman Vitality. You've got, actually, the list is extensive. Let me read it to you. You've got... 20% off, 30% off Super Male Vitality, 30% off Vitamin Mineral Fusion, 20% off Apparel, and 30% off Liver Shield. All right, on InfoWarsLife.com. This is like basically a Christmas sale. The idea is buy it for a veteran. They've been messed with 
in many many ways health wise uh, a lot of sad sad states that a lot of veterans are in um, chronic conditions and so on and so forth not saying this is related to that not giving any medical advice but go to InfoWarsLife.com, get the vitamin mineral fusion, multivitamin powder, 30% off, super male vitality, by far the best product, 30% off uh, that I've used for my own health in conjunction with things like vitamin mineral fusion and liver shield. Do the cleanse, get detox. The time is now 30% off. This is a weekend only sale for Memorial Day and 20% off all apparel. So definitely check that out. Biggs, thanks so much for joining us. You've definitely been on uh, fire today. You got some rage in your heart from all the madness going on. So thanks so much. Roger that. Uh, hashtag handcuff Hillary. Hashtag Hillary for Prison 2016. Make sure you get your Hillary for Prison t-shirt. That way I can see the next event and spot you out and give you a shake your hand and say, man, awesome job. There you go. Biggs just and can't be Hillary. stopped. He can't be stopped. He can't be Negative. stopped. Negative. All right. Negative. Right on. Thanks American for American all the way. Thanks for the fun. All right. So now we're going to cover some news. And also a reminder that uh, today, you know, it's just it's it's a, it's a wild day. Biggs is on fire. Um, this morning I passed an insane kidney stone, and I'm still here because I absolutely 100% want to be joining you on the airwaves, and I just can't stop myself either. So first and foremost, the device that eavesdrops on the voices in your head, mind-reaching machine, could soon turn your secret thoughts into speech. So this is apparently a machine that is going to turn what you think into verbal uh, linguistics. A mind-reading machine that can translate thoughts into speech is coming closer to reality. The research has been ongoing for several years, and recently scientists successfully managed to play back a word that someone is thinking by monitoring their brain activity. While there remains a long way to go, they say this could help victims of stroke and others with speech paralysis to communicate with their loved ones. You know what's interesting to me? I never like to default to the... Uh, you know, the so-called conspiracy angle. But, yeah, they're, they're definitely only going to use this to help people with strokes communicate with their families. Come on. Uh, it reminds me of the technology that MIT was looking at where they could take a high-res video and ping it with some type of laser technology or something and determine what was being said in the room by just something like a vase or like a water bottle, which has high vibrations based on the... Uh, what's happening in the room. So they could ping this high-res video or shoot it directly in the room and determine what you were saying based on the video or the pinging of something like a flower vase in the room. Now, imagine a world in which we live in with a machine that is capable of uh, translating your thoughts into speech, right? Uh, imagine, imagine they could take video of a room and ping it and determine what you're saying and then I can also <laughs> translate your thoughts into speech. You don't have to be a, a crazy tinfoil hat person to think about a world in which it's going to be very, very sad that we cannot have our own opinions and thoughts someday down the road. And hopefully it does not come to that. But yes, it's to help victims of stroke. And then obviously it has that utility. Obviously it does. But if they're also publishing things like the MIT, I believe it was some type of clandestine group in the government or whatever that was in conjunction making it, pinging the room and getting what you can say from a vase. That's obviously, if they're publicly announcing that they have that type of technology, something they've been using for a while. And you can only imagine the insane operations that go on overseas using those type of technologies. Pretty crazy. On the lighter side of things, protein jab to stop heart attacks. Injection brings hope for sufferers. This is from the Sunday Express. British researchers have found a way to use a natural protein to repair damaged heart tissue. One million UK patients could benefit, with the breakthrough expected to save tens of thousands of lives each year. The research team, led by Professor Ken, discovered a naturally occurring protein, Sudokins, which can stimulate a unique type of heart cell to repair the injured tissue. So I guess they go ahead and inject you. Researchers will now try and find the best way of delivering the protein to heart attack patients in the form of a drug which they should say should be commercially available within three to five years. So tens of thousands of people could be saved from that. Hopefully it won't cost $9 million. And the CEO of the pharmaceutical company that jacks up the price won't go on um, public record and laugh at you. Of course, I'm talking about the guy, the uh, Martin Scarelli, who jacked up through his company allegedly the uh, price of the drug for hiv patients that prevented parasitic infections if i recall correctly and it w went up from like what was it 17 dollars to 700 dollars or something like that 
And the look on his face when they interrogated him about it in Congress was very, very disturbing and concerning. And we talk about Memorial Day. We talk about what people are dealing with when they go overseas to fight throughout the wars and everything like that. And you can't help but think about ISIS. That's right. It's the Alex Jones Show. I'm Anthony Gucciardi. And looks like Tropical Storm Bonnie, what they call a tropical depression. It's made landfall in South Carolina. It's going on up the coast. It's been pretty insane here in Texas as well. It goes through Richmond, New York City, Boston, throughout tomorrow. So get prepared for that. Now, before the break, we're talking about everyone's favorite subject, ISIS. And now ISIS isn't only using 50,000 civilians as human shields, but they also appear to be expanding into the sex slave trade. So the Washington Post says ISIS fighters seem to be trying to sell sex slaves online. It says the woman is young, perhaps 18, with olive skin and dark bangs that droop onto her face. In the Facebook photo, she attempts to smile but doesn't look at her photographer. The caption mentions a single biographical fact. She is for sale. To all the bros thinking about buying a slave, this one is $8,000, begins the May 20th Facebook posting, which was attributed to an Islamic State fighter who calls himself Abu Assad al -Mani. The same man posted a second image a few hours later, this one a pale young face with weepy red eyes. Another slave is also about $8,000, yay or nay. What I want to know is where, where this is going down on Facebook? ISIS is just actively using Facebook. I mean, I know they're on Twitter. I guess they just have active Facebook accounts where they sell slaves to each other. $8,000, that's pretty absurd. But apparently, yeah, it says the photos were taken down within hours by Facebook, and they can't monitor everything. It's not that Facebook is supporting ISIS by not taking it down right away, right? Um, it's unclear whether your account's owner was doing the selling himself or commenting about women being sold by other fighters, but the unusual posting underscores what experts say is increasingly perilous existence for the hundreds of women who are thought to be held as sex slaves by the Islamic State. You see, that's the real mistreatment of women. The deep, deep dis mistreatment, very, very sad state of affairs, uh, is the extreme radicalism that forces them into imprisonment and ultimately treats them as subhumans. And that's something that should be talked about more. ISIS uses 50,000 civilians as human shields. We talked about that a little bit. This is from the Mirror. Islamic State fighters hid behind 50,000 civilian hostages as Iraqi forces blitzed Fallujah. The jihadis used the human shields as efforts to retake the terrorist stronghold, which kicked off under a U.S.-led coalition on May 22nd. Some 70 fanatics have been killed in airstrikes in the past five days in Iraq and Syria, including Mahir al-Bawali, ISIS's leader in Fallujah. Really puts your life into perspective, and on Memorial Day weekend, it's important to remember that that's what people are dealing with. 50,000 human civilian shields and women being sold as sex slaves. That's what people are actually putting their lives up, regardless of the politics, to fight. Meanwhile, U.S. commander warns that Iraqi forces may face resistance in key urban fight. Iraqi forces' ability to deal with a swift blow to the Islamic State in the city of Fallujah could be slowed by local support for militants. It's also very sad how misinformed and, and underinformed people are to the point where they would support ISIS, right? It, it kind of ties into... Uh, what I'm about to talk about, which is a, is a big departure, but you'll see it in a second. So this woman made a million dollars in elaborate scheme where she would buy designer handbags online and then return Chinese knockoffs, okay? It's from the Daily Mail. Woman who made a million dollars in elaborate scheme where she would buy designer handbags online, return Chinese knockoffs, charged with fraud. So this woman uh, basically bought designer purses online and returned fakes to the stores. And she sold the real Gucci, Fendi, and Burberry ba uh, bags online and made more than a million dollars from the scheme. Okay, So she would buy the designer bags online and then return cha uh, cheap uh, Chinese stuff. Now, here's the funny part. They didn't realize for a very long time that it was the cheap Chinese fakes. They didn't realize this woman was gaming the system. She was buying the Gucci bags and then... Uh, returning the Chinese crap that she bought on eBay or wherever she bought it, okay? This is a lesson. You know, I was just in New York City and Philadelphia as well, but mainly in New York. The gift shop at the hotel I was at had like all the, you know, insane designer stuff, like the bags were like five, ten thousand $10,000 or whatever. 
And I went down there to get some gum or something. And I was like, hey, you don't have any gum? He's like, oh, yes, can I interest you in this? And I had to buy a belt. And this belt was like $200, so I didn't, I didn't want the belt. But I looked at, at the, the stuff, and I said, just out of curiosity, you know, how much are those? And he goes, oh, this is the most amazing Gucci bag. It looks like anything else. It's, you know, $5,000. You cannot get it anywhere else. And I thought to myself, you know, how do I even know if that's real? Someone could have just made that and sold it on eBay. And I'm not against buying nice things. I have nice things. I wear nice things. I have nice material items. Okay, I, I'm all for quality. And if you happen to have a designer bag that you like, that's fine. But here's the moral of the story, okay? The moral of the story is, at the end of the day, how much are people putting stock into this junk, into the fake American dream? Because when I would walk down the streets of New York City, I would see... It was bizarre, actually. I went into that St. Patrick's Cathedral. The I believe it's called the very, very beautiful architectural uh, church, and it's 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 very nice. And you go in and you look at this church and you say, "Wow, the craftsmanship on this building." And there's people doing mass in there, like praying and stuff. And you look out the window, and it's Madison Avenue, and it's just all these stores and people running into H and M and spending all their money and running into Coach and looking like all five, like five shopping bags on each hand and that's like all they live for is like this material uh, just cathartic rage where they just buy everything they possibly can with all their money and run around with shopping bags and look at this designer stuff, look at this, oh my God, it's designer, oh my God. And people are all looking at each other like judging and I'm wearing some shirt. It's a nice shirt. It's not anything amazing looking at my shirt, just like looking at the brands. You can see people judging you based on the brands. Is that the new American dream? Because it sure as hell is not what the veterans fought for many, many years ago and continue to fight for this day. They don't fight for your right to go shop at H&M. They don't fight. Well, they do, actually. But the intention is not to have this new repackaged fake American dream. Because I'll tell you what, that's not the American dream. I see all the immigrants that come over in New York and work hard. I used to live in Philadelphia for most of my life. and I used to, I've been to New York hundreds of times. And I've seen the really, really strong-willed immigrants that come over and have a lot of, of faith in the American dream. And I see the lazy Americans, myself included in many ways, that we've bought into the fakeness. We've bought into the plastic American dream. It's, it's a lie rebranded as the American dream where we work our butts off, work our butts off. Just so we can be the consumed instead of the consumers. Just so we can pay $180 billion in taxpayer money to big bank profits. And it's not all the corporation's fault, okay? It's not, I'm not, I, I love business. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a, I'm a successful entrepreneur. I love business. I love good people making money. I love funding operations. I love going to InfoWarsLife.com and funding the Memorial Day sale so all this can happen. Real enterprise, real business. In fact, I'm going to plug it. 30% off Super Male Vitality, Vitamin Mineral Fusion, and Liver Shield, InfoWarsLife.com. You should support InfoWars. You should support these companies that are good, that you like, that you uh, align yourself with. Just remember that the American dream is not buying $5,000 handbags so you could be accepted by other people and so people think you're cool. It's um, not going and spending all of your time to study hard and getting into debt to work a job you hate for the rest of your life and paying bills until you die? I don't believe in that. I don't think that's what it is. And I don't think that in the foxholes in World War II and even World War I that our ancestors, my ancestors died in, in, in combat. Uh, my grandfather also was in uh, World War II. They didn't go in and do all of this. So we could do nothing. So we could go and buy $5,000 handbags and, and consider that to be the greatest thing we've ever done. They didn't do it so that we could go into the streets with five shopping bags on each hand and think, this is it. We have arrived. This is Valhalla. They didn't do that. And they didn't do it so we could sit around and complain and whine and talk about stupid PC issues that no one cares about. They didn't do it for that either. They did it so we could actually make something of ourselves and make something of the future of this country and humanity as a whole. They did it to give us opportunity because there's people that died of the most absurd, horrible, horrific ways from different mustard gas and type of issues where it goes into your respiratory system and basically burns you and kills you. There's people that have that, their limbs blown off. They had to watch themselves bleed out and die for hours or days. There's people that have been eviscerated 
mentally, spiritually, physically, so that you can do whatever you want on this planet, so that we can, so that I can. And it's your choice. And for me, my Memorial Day message is make the right choice and actually do something with your life and stand up for good, stand up for freedom, stand up for honor and humanity instead of attaching your life's existence to the very things they were fighting to make us go against. So that's my message. This is The Alex Jones Show. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a very, very beautiful Memorial Day. And check out Alex's uh, show tomorrow from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central. InfoWars Life Memorial Day sale is ending 30% off. Super Male Vitality and all the products.